It's incredibly important to understand our debt-based monetary system. We have a complete and utterly destructive policy in place where central banks are allowed to do anything they wish as long as they claim it's in the best interest of the people. They admittedly create inflation which distorts reality and guarantees some loss of value every single day. That's an absurd policy without a doubt. Yet this is what's happening all over the world. Central banks like the ECB and others have gone so far as to create a system of negative interest rates and have no intention of turning that back. Central banks like the Fed have one simple mandate, destroy the value of your hard earned money. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at the Federal Reserve, we're going to talk about central banks, and we're going to talk about money in general, currency as some like to refer to it. Now, what we're going to get into, I believe, is extremely important, and yet, of course, we'll never make it to the mainstream. I received many, many replies to the comment I made on my community or blog section asking about what should I I do with the channel? Should I start to include some new things? Should I get out there and talk about different topics? Overwhelmingly, most of the people were saying, do what you do. And this is really the key because I'm trying to get feedback from all of you. Now, some people have some ideas and some people have other ideas. And I found it extremely informative to get all of that information from you. And I want to thank each and every one of you, of course. Now, today, as I record this, we're just past the US Thanksgiving, and I made a post about that as well. And so what I wanted to get into was this article out of CNBC first. Thanksgiving shoppers expected to drop a record $4.4 billion online. Now this just shows you that people want to spend. But are they spending money? Are they spending cash? Or are they really racking up debt? And this of course just shows you what has happened over the years. A lot of people have gone broke. A lot of people don't have money to spend, but they certainly have credit. And if you see a lot of people out there that are always running into problems, that always have a lot of debt, they're always getting offers in the mail. They're always getting notifications inside of their bank when they log in and it's telling them, hey, why don't you sign up for a new credit card? Why don't you get this line of credit? And so on constantly. It's not necessarily the people that are paying their bills on time and they don't carry a balance. No, no. It's the people, it tends to be anyway, the people that are really unable to pay that receive the most amount of these offers. And that's just crazy to think about. But of course, this is a business just like any other. Now, I wanted to show you this here because it's going to bring me into my next point. So we have $4.4 billion in a single day. And if I scroll over to this one, what we're looking at is out of NBC News, a new survey finds that a significant number of Americans have more debt and are increasingly worried about being able to service that debt. So what, right away, we have a problem here because a lot of people, they are carrying debt from last year into this year. So they bought that wonderful 60 inch LED TV or whatever it is at Walmart. They were fighting just to get it. They clawed somebody's eyes out and they got that all the way back home after six hours of total, you know, time involved here. Finally, they are happy because they can watch their Netflix and it's fantastic. However, when they are, you know, 365 days later still paying off that TV, I would think you get some buyer's remorse, but apparently not because people are willing to drop that money down. Check this out. Yet this holiday shopping season could be another record breaker with online spending alone set to hit almost $144 billion. And credit experts say holiday season pitches to open store credit cards could exacerbate shoppers' debt. There's always those offers, no matter what store you go into, it's Costco or any of these other retailers, you go in and they're offering you some sort of credit card, it's free to sign up today, it'll only take five minutes, it's gonna give you a better price, we'll give you this introductory offer and so on. We know what they're up to, obviously, However, all of these people, they get swindled by it. 
and many of them, they pay off their bills. It's not an issue. There is, however, a growing number of people that are only paying the minimum. Forget about the delinquencies. That's one issue altogether. But the people who are paying the minimum, technically, they're not going to show up on these delinquency reports. They're paying, but they're just paying the minimum. And they carry that over and over and over and over again. That, to me, is a big, big issue issue. And so this connects in with interest rates, of course, in the United States set by the Federal Reserve. This happens to be the Fed funds rate, which we can see is now on its down cycle. We are at 1.83 as I record this. The last update is November 1st on this. Essentially, what we're looking at is a range in which they have an upper bound and a lower bound, but ultimately the direction in which they are heading is downward. And they will most likely head to zero. Now, in the you know opposite way to look at this, we have what is the credit card debt and all these other high, high interest loans, which are extremely high rates of interest, despite what the Federal Reserve has done. Now, we'll see if that changes at all, of course, because we did see a few years ago that the credit card rates came down a little bit. I think it was, let's say, 14% or so. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, what we're looking at here is people that are heavily indebted. So when we start to look into this debt-based system, we figure it out. We figure out why this is the case. I thought this was really interesting here. What we're looking at is directly from the St. Louis Fed. The Federal Reserve themselves had a few interesting things to say. Now, I don't want to read this whole thing to you, but there are a couple points in here that I wanted to make, ultimately because it is really reflective of the actions they're taking today. Now, they say, no, 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 we're not going to do this, but there are some other examples of it. Economist Herbstein once said, if something cannot go on forever, it will stop. In other words, trends that are unsustainable will not continue because the economy will adjust, sometimes in abrupt and jarring ways. And we see this all the time because everything must revert to the mean. Eventually, it has to happen. And these governments, they're always trying to create a solution to the problem in which they created. Right here, they say a little bit further down, a solution some countries with high levels of unsustainable debt to have tried is printing money. In this scenario, the government borrows money by issuing bonds and then orders the central bank to buy those bonds by creating or printing money. Where have you heard of this before? That's right. The Federal Reserve basically doing the exact same thing. All central banks around the world have done it, but the Federal Reserve is definitely front and center. History has taught us, however, that this type of policy leads to extremely high rates of inflation, hyperinflation, and off often ends in economic ruin. They talk about Weimar, Germany, Zimbabwe, and Venezuela. An important protection against this type of policy is to create an independent central bank, and they go on and talk about their nonsense. I found it interesting because they believe, if you read the next paragraph, they believe that they don't have any worry because they are so independent and fantastic. However, they, uh, the other countries, other places that had, this has happened historically, they are at fault. They're the ones who have a problem scenario. Well, this is not the case because everybody seems like they're doing the right thing at that given time. And then we look back in the pages of history and see the problems time and time again. The Federal Reserve and the other central banks are never able to adapt. And perhaps you could argue that this is intentional, but ultimately when you look at it, it is very, very clear. Their policies create a problem in the first place. Now, this right here is interesting. It comes directly from the Federal Reserve gov's website you might have heard of this before this is a speech in 2002 given by ben bernanke and it's called deflation making sure it doesn't happen here this is extremely good in fact it's probably some of the best reading material that you can get out of any central bank if you haven't read it already the link will be in the description this is a famous one because he basically covers a few points, I think it's four points, that are essentially getting into exactly 
what the Federal Reserve would do should they run into a deflationary scenario. And one of those things is the fact that they will devalue the currency. I'll bring this up here that they could devalue the currency 40%. Now, he's suggesting that the US has done this, of course, against gold back in 33. 34. So during this time frame, they devalue the currency and it actually, according to them, the economy grew strongly. And by the way, 1934 was one of the best years of the century for the stock market. So if you devalue the currency, isn't it strange that the stock market does well after? Well, obviously, that's what's happening today. That's what's happening in any of these other events. If you're willing to destroy the currency, you send that currency's value downward assets are priced higher now it doesn't happen evenly you're not going to say well well you printed one trillion dollars therefore housing goes this times higher or stocks will go this much higher no no no, it doesn't work like that but of course this is the general rule and that to me is very telling because we have seen this time and time again where a central bank goes out there tries to print money and fails i think it's actually intentional but i don't want to go in that direction because some people don't want to hear all that but regardless if you haven't read this before it's so important he even refers to the helicopter drop that's a quote helicopter drop at the very bottom of the page you can see it referring to milton friedman of course but suggesting hey we'll do whatever it is that we have to to make this happen as far as i'm concerned that's crazy because that's your savings that's everything you have and if you don't think that could ever happen in the united states this has already happened twice in history yes that was a long time ago but it just shows you that it could happen anywhere okay absolutely anywhere and then a little bit of humor to finish off the video if you you can believe it or not this company right here that actually does the printing of the uk banknotes has gone bankrupt that is to me just unbelievable because you know it, it's kind of insane when you look at it i mean this is the company that's doing all the printing and right now we have enough printing going on that's for sure and they're in financial trouble now obviously there's probably some other things going on here i just thought it was a little bit of humor they're having trouble it looks like they got a takeover happening so maybe they'll be rescued in this situation but i just thought it was funny to interject here in this video well that's all if you want to support me all you have to do is click the like button and when you click that one button, you are supporting this channel. So thank you very much. If you want to learn about passive income, if you want to learn about business, if you want to do so absolutely for free, I have the Amazon GPS. It's a free e-course to teach you how to sell on Amazon, the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to learn about the financial system, the central banks, where the monetary system found its weaknesses along the way, I cover that in these two books. If you see the link in the description, it'll take you over to Amazon where you can flip through the pages of the books for yourself. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. Don't go anywhere. Where are you going? You haven't watched this video yet. You got to. Click on it and I will see you there.